Hey guys, long time no see. Um, first I want to start off by saying I apologize if the audio for this video is bad. I'm filming on a different camera and I don't have a mic for it yet. So please <laughs> don't worry about it. I will try to get at least something fixed. Well, I don't know how bad it's going to be. But um, anyway, I'm here today to give you some Halloween autumn book recs. Um, we're kind of in the middle of September now. So I wanted to give everyone a little bit of... Um, motivation on some books I think would be really good to read this time of the year um and also I want to say that yes I have read all of these books but I want you to understand can I remember exactly what happens no but I like them so um I'm gonna give you maybe a brief synopsis but I'm gonna tell you that they're good okay because anyone can read a blurb that's on a book I don't think I need to tell you all the ins and outs so I'm just gonna give you kind of like more of the vibe of the book rather than what happens because really I don't remember I'm gonna be honest I don't know like maybe a little bit of what happens anyway so we're gonna start with some like cult classics you know very basic ones that probably everyone, everyone will recommend we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley a very classic um, book it's considered the first gothic novel I think um, I've talked about this book a lot um, if you want to hear me talk about it more I talk about it in some of my other videos um, very good book. A really good book to start off with reading classics as well, and I think that's really cool that it has those gothic elements and it, it's very easy to read and very accessible. Um, so yeah, it's about a doctor and a creature that he creates and he basically loses it and um, it questions a lot about uh, life and the kind of morality behind making life and making a creature and what does that mean. So Frankenstein. <laughs> so next, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, again, cult classic. Um, it is about a doctor who does all these experiments and then there's, he kind of has this second personality and again it's kind of about good and bad, kind of similar to Frankenstein, um, but a very a really good book, really short book, really has those like, key gothic elements and I think it really, there's really really good storytelling in this book and really good atmosphere building. Next, I'm just going to quickly touch on is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, again, I think everyone knows what Dracula is, although I do think reading the book is really interesting uh, on how it's different than how we per we see portrayals of Dracula. There's a lot more about the, the people in this book rather than Dracula himself, um, which I do think makes it, it's a little bit slow if you're just looking for Dracula, but I think it's really, really interesting and the development of the characters and um, their relationships with each other are really, really interesting. Um, when you're facing something like like vampires and I think that contrast is really really nice um, The next one we have is The Haunted House by Charles Dickens um, Again, really short book um, Again, Dickens got very very good storytelling uh, world building um, Not one of his most popular books, but one I think is very he has such a way with words um, Although I don't love all of his work. You can't ignore his really good way with his storytelling and stuff and I think this one really encapsulates it because it's very hard to write something that's scary because it's words on a page but I think he really encapsulates that really well the same way in that Poe um, when you read his work or Stephen King they really have there's an it factor to them that really just you are like genuinely scared so Haunted House by Charles Dickens uh, next we have The Turn of the Screw by Henry James um, this book is kind of similar to The Haunted House uh, by Charles Dickens um, there's a Netflix show about this book, um, and it's these two children. It's a nanny looking after these two children, and these sort of ghost figures start to appear, and it's, um, again, very chilling, but a very good read, a very um, easy to read, and really, really captivating. Next we have one a little bit different, uh, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This isn't necessarily a Halloween book, but I really think it does match the time of year. This book features a lot on the moors, this book has a lot of big emotions. <laughs> this book is very um, psychological and very brooding and quite dark um, and there's a lot of conflict between the characters and I really think this is the kind of time to read it because it's not really a book you read in spring. You know it's very um, dark and Byronic and brooding and I really think this is this would be the time to read it. The next one that's kind of similar to Wuthering Heights is Shakespeare's Macbeth. Um, Macbeth I think is one of the most accessible Shakespeare's. I think it is very good. I studied it for GCSE English Literature and as an opening to Shakespeare I did think it was very good. Quite similar to Wuthering Heights in that it's set kind of on the moors and it's again very brooding and there's a lot of really interesting context as well behind this book. 
you know, in kind of Shakespearean time period and it really kind of shows both just the interesting literature and also the history of the time. And there's a lot of very famous like quotes from this book, like, yeah, so fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air, was said by Shakespeare and I think it's also really interesting when you read Shakespeare and be like, that's a really famous saying nowadays and it was him that, that wrote it. Um, but yeah, very very good book, very suitable for this time of the year. Our next one uh, book is uh, The Crucible by Arthur Miller. This is based around the Salem Witch Trials, although it doesn't actually have any um, kind of witchy happenings to it. Um, it's based on the like actual Salem Witch Trials in which no actual like magic took place, but it's, um, it's about the community in Salem and how mass hysteria led to the witch trials. And I think it's, again, contextually very, very interesting. I studied this at A-level. Um, very, very interesting and a very good book and has really good um, writing. This is a play and it's got very, very good writing. And um, I think it's really interesting to read a play and see how um, all the characters are kind of set up because it's very, very intentional. I think sometimes with a book it's not as intentional, but when you read a play you can see exactly how like the writer wants it to be and how it's set out and I think that really it gives this book a lot of life to something that is so tragic and, and quite horrible. Um, so yeah, The Crucible by Arthur Miller. And our last book is going to be a poetry collection that's going to be Ariel by Sylvia Plath. Um, Sylvia Plath, you probably know who she is, a very very famous poet. Um, she died not long after she published Ariel, I think, and um, compared to her other collection such as the Colossus. This is her darkest and most brooding piece of work and I think that's why you should read it at this time. These are quite hard heavy hitting poems, um, especially some of these, and I think really studying these poems is very very interesting and there's such life in these poems which is quite sad when they are so um, dark, but you can really see she fully, I'd say this is her greatest work and she you can really hear her voice through these poems that you didn't really hear in some of her other works because she was trying to kind of contain that but this near the end of her life was really her magnum opus um, except for maybe The Bell Jar which was her novel um, so yeah Ariel by Sylvia Plath so that was the end of this video I hope you guys enjoyed I hope that wasn't too quick because again I don't want to be explaining these books when you know sometimes you, people might not find that interesting and maybe just me telling you a little bit about it and kind of the vibe of it because I like when people tell you the vibe of a book sometimes you'll have someone explain a book to you and you think it's completely different and you read it and you're like oh this is at all what I thought like it matches the synopsis but the vibe is different so I hope that wasn't too unusual for you and I hope you guys enjoyed um and I will see you guys later bye